Okay, we are live. Yo, yo. Let me see some here. Uh, I don't know. I guess I could leave that light on if I wanted to. I guess it really don't make much of a difference. You guys can still see me. It doesn't matter whether I got light on me or not. I'm still ugly, so. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yo, yo. What's good, everybody? It is the godfather of VR. The Ageless Wonder, the man, Lincoln Clay, coming back at you with another live stream. Uh, Spartan God, what is good? Yes, this has become a VR channel. Fact of the matter is, um, Spartan God, if you want to go, want me to go back and do a timeline, uh, well, most of us know that the PlayStation VR launched in um, October of 2016, which I, you know, you guys heard me say a million times, I bought one day one. Um, sat around for a couple of months doing nothing because my son uh, wasn't playing it because I originally bought it for him. Uh, long story short, after I got into it, I would say that um, I started my YouTube channel in 2000, December, uh, the, I think December 17th, uh, 2017, I want to say, yeah, 2017. Um, by the time I started my YouTube channel, I was already playing VR games. I just hadn't become passionate about it yet. So um, my channel was still kind of based on uh, mostly PlayStation stuff and, you know, some of that console war shit, to tell you the truth. And um, over time, as my channel was still, as I was still making podcasts centered around um, PlayStation or, or Microsoft or... <clears throat> you know, fucked up companies like EA or something, um, I was still playing a lot of VR behind the scenes. And then um, I probably say that the, um, even though it made me motion sick, Drive Club was the game that showed me how much potential uh, VR had because, you know, again, you heard me, got, you heard me say that before. A lot of those cars, I'll never get a chance to sit in those cars in real life or drive those cars in real life. So, um, so Drive Club was probably the game that showed me the potential of VR. And it started to grow from there. And um, I think by the time that uh, Firewall, uh, no, let's, let's go back. Farpoint was the game that might have started me down the road of being passionate about uh, VR because that aim controller... Farpoint has such a great story. The aim controller, um, how immersive it was. Those giant spiders jumping at you was kind of scary. And then um, I would probably say my passion for, v for VR was in full swing when um, when Firewall came out. And um, I, th I think by then, you know, uh, my channel had already showed signs of a. Uh, leaning you know gravitating towards vr so i i would say this channel has been a vr channel for well over a year um you know i don't see myself going i ain't gonna you know i'll still mess around with a flat screen here and there but uh vr i'm here to stay so and uh <clears throat> man i just got through with a wonderful workout playing beat saber um I guess since I went ahead and opened that can of worms, I finally got up off my ass and uh, watched a couple of videos of how to um, add custom tracks to Beat Saber on the Oculus Quest. Now, yes, I've done this on the Oculus Rift, but, you know, it's one of those situations where um, I have to be in the mood to physically get up, turn on that PC, type in the pass codes, pin numbers, and like really be in the mood to play it but the quest again you know just put it on and go and so um i finally got up off my ass learned how to put some custom tracks on the oculus quest and then i learned how to put uh custom sabers on there because my son wanted that part of it you know which my um beat saber is really starting to grow on my son too because um when he plays vr chat it has his own version of beat saber amongst the tens maybe hundreds of mini games that's already in there and um, so he definitely wanted me to buy Beat Saber for the Quest because he also likes the 360 mode on the Quest as well because there's no wires. You can turn all the way around <clears throat> to slice the cubes whichever direction they're coming from. But so, you know, you guys heard me say it before a million times, I'm 52 years old. 
I love old school R&B, old school funk, a um, lot of old school rap. <clears throat> so I had been to this Beast Saber site before, you know, and downloaded a bunch of songs for my Rift over on PC. But now I'm doing it, you know, on the Quest. And then there's a way, um, there's a way for you to do it directly and not have to plug the Quest up to the computer. Um, you can do it directly from the Quest. So I probably downloaded about 30 songs, old school shit, Michael Jackson, like Lionel Richie, um, cool in the game. And uh, man, I had a hell of a workout playing Beat Saber to all those songs. I mean, a, I had a great workout. And um, Beat Saber on the Quest made me fall in love with Beat Saber all over again. Not that I ever fell out of love with Beat Saber. Um, I just, you know, Beat Saber was there, you know, whenever I need a good workout. Um, you know, for the PlayStation VR, you know, I'll probably only play Beat Saber on the PlayStation VR uh, whenever I feel like streaming it. But, um, but the custom tracks, yeah, on the Quest, you know, I'll eventually get back to putting the custom tracks back on the PC. But uh, being able to do that on the Quest is just... Man, like I said, I fell I fell in love with Beat Saber all over again. So um, you could probably say that Beat Saber is the candy crush of all of all VR games. You know, Beat Saber might be the Minecraft of all VR games. So um spark guy you said rockstar been watching vr if you play the michael mission where trevor tortured the dude you'll see five people wearing a vr headset across the street from the coffee shop now that's been quite a while since i played the campaign because um yeah it's probably been about a good i want to say it's probably been about a good three maybe four years since I finished the campaign on Grand Theft Auto. But <clears throat> but it's super obvious now, in my opinion, because um, there's a VR mod out there for Grand Theft Auto, as you guys know by now. And um, shortly after this guy came out and let it be known that the VR mod was out for uh, Grand Theft Auto, um, shortly after that, Grand Theft Auto came up on sale on Steam. So I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, is this a coincidence or did Rockstar know about this VR mod and hurry up and put the game on sale so they can sell a few more copies? You said that came out in 2013, Spartan God. So now the dude, the same guy who did this VR mod for Grand Theft Auto, you know, uh, over the weekend said that, um, that he improved Grand Theft Auto VR mod. Uh, most notably the cutscenes, I guess, uh, I, though I, I have not played it. Um, I guess the cutscenes had a black frame around around it, and I guess the screen looked like it was like pressed up against your face. So I guess he improved that, <clears throat> and guess what? Grand Theft Auto is on sale again. And I screenshotted it this time, you know, um... At this time, I'm convinced it's no coincidence, but I think, I think in order to make it look like uh, Grand Theft Auto going on sale is not connected to this VR mod, Red Dead Redemption is also on sale too. But here's the thing about it: uh, Grand um, um, Spartan, y'all, you said no. Rockstar made it and authorized it, like all emulators. A console company makes them. Y'all really think it dudes uh, make an emulator? I don't know, you know, well, I'm, I'm hearing that it was a single guy who did this, so I don't know if this was something where he did it on his own. Um, I just find it, to, you know, I'm just putting two, to, two and two together from the outside. I'm finding this to be a coincidence that the game is on sale now that that VR mod is out. The game is $15, and um, the game is $15 on sale to the six, and I'm going to go ahead and buy it. I've already played the campaign once, but it's worth playing it again in VR. Uh, you said, Spark Guy, you said Grand Theft Auto 6 only online VR. Shit, I wish that was the case. 
but ain't no way um, Spartan got Grand Theft Auto 6 online only VR there's no way they do that unless it's a, like a separate online game from them um, like when Grand Theft Auto 6 comes out I'm led to believe that they'll probably go the traditional route and have a campaign as well as an online mode but the VR part of it I figured it'll either be included in that but it'll be a um, restricted to only VR people playing with VR people or it'll be a separate online mode that's you know away from that but um, but if Rockstar does decide to go that route it definitely said only online though is a definite huh um, but I think um, if Rockstar did go that route only online VR for for uh, Grand Theft Auto is I don't is not going to happen um, until the PlayStation VR until um, I think until PS5 not only till PS5 comes out uh, maybe a game like Grand Theft Auto 6 having some kind of VR mode I don't think it'll happen until at the earliest um, I don't think it would happen until after the PlayStation VR 2 comes out because a lot of people pretty much um, figuring it that it's a given that the PlayStation VR 2 PSVR 2 is gonna have some different controllers because everybody's you know not too uh, not too keen on these move controllers not having thumbsticks so um, that's one that's been one of the obstacles for developers at the current moment um, with PSVR is the uh, the move controllers I mean it, it shit it took Ubisoft a while to add uh, support for the move controllers on Space Junkies but yes whether this guy who did this um, VR mod is connected to Rockstar or not, I don't know. I just know that he came out with a um, he came out with improvements to the mod, and now the game's on sale. So there's definitely, in my eyes, there's definitely a connection there. But hey, you know, whether this whether they work for um, Rockstar or not, or Rockstar gave him the green light to go ahead and do it. It's still my point that I'm making is that, you know, hey, they de they still watching the VR landscape. So, uh, you know, when Grand Theft Auto 6 comes out, maybe uh, maybe something will happen, you know, as far as the VR part of it goes. Um, a VR mod might be enough to draw me back to Red Dead Redemption 2, even though I'm not too crazy about the game. But... Um, you said it'll be a hundred dollars though. Yeah, I'm, I, I I wouldn't doubt it for a deluxe edition of the game, but a standard game, I don't know. A hundred dollars? I don't know. I mean, currently right now. Um, if you buy uh, if you buy deluxe editions of games out there right now, they're a hundred bucks. So, I hate to say it though, if Rockstar did that shit, and the standard game was a hundred bucks on these next gen consoles, they'll probably get away with it. Ah, golf, what's up? So, yeah, you know what? Let me go ahead and uh, make this uh, Grand Theft Auto purchase. For $15, make ya holla. Go to uh, Steam. Yeah, I'm about to go ahead and scoop this up right now. You said that would be dumb, Spartan God? Um, yeah, it would, but honestly, I really... 
I think if they did do that, they probably would get away with it. I don't know, but I don't know. Maybe I'm getting ahead of myself because, um, let me see here. There's a week-long deal going on. New deals each Monday. So... You know, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. Maybe I'm reading too much into it. Maybe not. But in any case, it's fifteen dollars. Make you holler. Let me go ahead and buy it. Working. I agree. Purchase. And, uh, done. I just purchased a Grand Theft Auto 5. What do we got here? Okay, so uh, now, update on my uh, Oculus Rift. Uh, I packed it up. You know, Oculus Support, you know, they got back with me. And they said to um, remove the battery from the controller and uh, let it sit for three minutes without a battery in it because that's supposed to reset the controller. And then they said pair it up again. So I did that, and um, I'd probably say a couple of minutes into playing it, the controller started acting up again. Move forward, release the thumbstick, and my character starts sliding backwards. So I just said, hell with this. This shit got a warranty, so I'm not even going to bother with it. So I just went ahead and packed it up and took it back to um, Best Buy. And, um, and they ordered another one, and it'll be here Friday. So that's that. They said it would be here two days sooner. If I would allow, uh, let it be shipped, you know, to my um, apartment. But I said to hell with that because um, I'm not going to deal with uh, them dropping the shit off at my front door and just leaving it there. And then somebody steals it. So I just said, you know, let it, um, I'll pick it up from the store. So it'll be here Friday. So, which is still cool because, um, truth be told, Oculus Quest is, is, it is more than enough to get me through. I mean, um... Even with my PlayStation VR headset taking a dump. Um, the only games on there that I'm that I was playing would be uh, Firewall. I was starting to play Spark a little bit. Which I might actually go back and get that on PC. I was starting to play Spark a little bit. I tried to get in touch with the developer to get Racket Fury for the uh, PlayStation VR. Uh, and um, if I happen to already be wearing a the headset, then I might pop in and do a couple of songs on Beat Saber. But, <clears throat> excuse me, it's just so much better playing Beat Saber with custom tracks. So, you know, it is what it is. So... Yeah, the quest is uh the quest is more than getting me by, and um, I think there's a game coming up called Iron called Iron Sights that's supposed to come out in the middle of this month. I guess they're just trying to wrap up getting the Kickstarter for this game. Uh, BMF, who's a big YouTuber, uh, he's probably you. I don't know. You could probably make a case that he's the face of the Oculus Quest right now. As well as Gamertag VR, they both, uh, you know, did videos of this game uh, called Iron Sights. This got me really curious. Um, looking at the video real quick, I would probably describe this game as a, a little bit of um, For Honor, you know, in VR. You know, because uh, For Honor for um, Ubisoft is actually not a bad game. Um, the thing that made me lose taste for that game, uh, For Honor... Uh, number one is there was a character that I think had basically an unfair advantage. And 
how Ubisoft tries to make this shit into a, um, a seasonal game, you know, trying to sell these season passes on these games. I mean, because to me, I think it, I think it separates the 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 user base. I I don't think it does, but it feels like it does, because I think you can still play with other people even though you didn't purchase the season pass, but they'll still have access to way more characters than you do, because that's definitely obvious on Rainbow Six. But um, at this point, I'm just you know blabbing on. So let me go to Twitter. I'm, I know I made a couple of um post so let me elaborate on a couple of these posts from Twitter no big deal but it's just something to talk about let me see Astrobot director which you guys may or may not know about that, but Astrobot director becomes PlayStation Japan studio boss. That sounds like quite the promotion to me. Uh, Nicholas Doucette, the creative director behind 2018 PSVR hit Astrobot Rescue Mission, is now head of Sony PlayStation's Japan studio. It has been announced. An HR announcement from Sony itself confirmed the news this weekend. Doucette now carries the title Japan Studio uh, Director. The developer previously headed up Japan Studio's Asabi team, which developed Astro Bot as well as his predecessor, the Playroom VR. The Playroom launched for free alongside PSVR in 2016 and featured several mini games, including one that grew into the full Astro Bot game. Uh, we're, hopeful, we're hopeful that this means Japan Studios' future involves yet more PSVR projects. To this day, Astrobot remains one of the best PSVR games available. The third-person platformer is bursting with charm and innovation, offering an absolutely delightful and powerfully immersive gameplay experience. God, so many adjectives to describe this game. In fact, the game currently sits atop of our list of uh, best PSVR games. Ah, Impatient Fire, what is good? What is good with you? I'm glad uh, glad you were able to join us. Of course. You see, there's plenty of potential for Astrobot sequel, for example. In fact, scrap plans for the original game, which included local multiplayer, which we still love to see integrated into another title. Uh, of course, Sony's PlayStation 5 is on the horizon, set to launch this holiday season. It's very likely that Japan Studio is working on projects for the new console. Could it perhaps also be preparing VR games to launch on the device? We know PS5 will support the original PSVR, and we also know Sony is prototyping a potential new headset, but we yet to see uh, PSVR 2 formally announced. So, um, yeah, I took that to be a granted that with this guy uh, being promoted to, you know, from the director of uh, of the Astrobot game to uh, head of Japan Studios, I already took that as a, you know, as a given that first thing popped in my head that they they're probably going to give us some kind of vr project if it's not a sequel to astrobot but i think um i think a sequel to astrobot is probably going to be a given but man if it um if it shows up on ps5 before psvr 2 comes out i don't know how that's going to work because you know the move controllers are still going to be an issue but when PSVR 2 comes out, I'm assuming they're going to have this controller issue solved. So I think any game that comes out um, I think after PSVR 2 comes out, any game that comes out on that headset, then I think you're going to see what Sony originally had in mind you know, for uh, VR. You know, because I think the current VR it uh it's it's great but you know the move controllers seems like something that was kind of thrown in uh spartan god you said ape escape is definitely coming back hey but the thing about it spartan god now it's just like um with ps5 when that comes out any game that comes out um any game whether it's first party or third party it's always going to be in the back of my mind is it going to have um vr support you said you would love Ape, Ape Escape in VR. I mean, I never played it before, but hell, you know, if it's in VR, it'll, you know, it'll get my attention. 
So I won't be able to play uh, Grand Theft Auto in VR until this weekend. But, um, but yeah, you know, um, when PlayStation 5 comes out, any game that comes out, uh, a kill zone. I'm going to wonder if there's, you know, will it have a VR mode? Will it have a VR multiplayer? Because I think Killzone, um, I think Killzone is a game that was ahead of its time. Now, some people don't care for the campaign, the story, which I think the story was, I think the story was decent. Um, I probably finished about 95% of that game, but I got stuck at a certain point. And then, unfortunately, I, I cheated. I went to YouTube and watched the ending because I was since I was so close to finishing the game, um, I did, w what I originally did was watch the video to try to get past the point where I got stuck, and I just ended up watching the, the ending of the game. Uh, but I spent countless hours playing multiplayer on a kill zone. So... Um, the multiplayer on Killzone is is really fun. Um, that's one of them. That's one of those hidden gems. Uh, hell, the the multiplayer on The Last of Us uh, remastered. I I still like that. Yeah, impatient fire. Uh, let me see here. Um, Spartan God, they should have allowed PSVR full compatibility on PC. I mean, it's there right now. If you want to. Um, if you want to, you know, I think, in fact, I think the person you want to talk to is in here, is in, is in Patient Fire. I think he might be the one that directed me towards the software you can use that um, will allow you to use PSVR on PC. And it looks pretty good from what I understand. Sparring guy, you said why you cheated, but here's the thing, though. See, I got stuck. Because I got caught up in the story, and I got stuck at a certain I got stuck at a certain point, and I tried like I don't know how many times to get past it. Finally, I said the hell with. I broke down, went to YouTube, tried to see what I had to do to get past this point that I was stuck at. Once I saw what I had to do, and then the story continued on from there. I just sat there and watched it, and then I'm thinking to myself, okay. There's no sense in me going back and finishing the game because it's probably only about, you know, 20 minutes of play left. So I never went back and finished it, but I still played countless hours of the multiplayer. So um, even the current kill zone, if that if that multiplayer was in VR, you know, I would put a lot of time in that. Um, and Patient Fire, you said kill zone 2 was my favorite first person shooter last gen. And you also saying, um, um, I, you know, Ivory is a software you can use on PC to connect to PC VR, uh, Spartan God. Now, I mean, PlayStation games on PC natively using, um, oh, hmm. Well, but I did, you know, Spartan God, you said right there, no, I mean PlayStation games on PC natively using PC, um, using PSVR. I mean, you lost me a little bit there. I mean, are you saying that, um, being able to play PlayStation VR games on PC using the PlayStation VR headset, if that's... If that's what you mean, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if something like that will happen. But hey, I have posed the question before: if Sony would send any of their um, VR exclusives to PC, being it look, being that it looks like they're going to go that route of sending some of their, um, you know, flat screen games to PC. Jay Swoles, what is going on? He says, Spartan God, how the story was straightforward. Um, and um, and Patient Fire, he said, it's a great program. It only costs a few dollars on Steam. Uh, it's very simple to use, too. Oh, my God. I didn't know that was a uh, a program that was on Steam. Spartan God, you said, put all their PlayStation games on PC, full compatibility. Um... I don't Okay, uh, here here's what I see. Here's what I see that, that could possibly happen. A game like Firewall, I couldn't see something like that going to PC, but a game like Astrobot, I can see something like that going to PC in a um in a year or two. 
I could even um I could even possibly see a game like um Blood and Truth going to PC in a couple of years. I don't think it would happen, but if Sony were to go that route, I think those would probably be two of the games that they could send over there because those are two games um, that are like kind of like bestsellers on the PlayStation VR. Um, you said, I doubt that's ever going to happen. Sony isn't Microsoft. They're not Microsoft, but they still... PC has come out of Sony's mouth enough times that it's got people raising their eyebrows, that's for sure. You said that game wild better be coming back to PlayStation coming back for PlayStation 5. See a lot of these games I'm not even that familiar with. Some of these games people um you guys are talking about. I'm going to need another drink here in a minute. Well, hell, while I'm here, let's go on to one more of my post. So, says here, this one, the ugly truth about EA's sudden Nintendo Switch love fest. So it looks like uh, EA flipped the script and all of a sudden they want to break their backs to get their games over on the Nintendo Switch. Um, so let me leave, let's read a little bit about this. Uh, here's the ugly truth about EA's sudden U-turn on the, on the Nintendo Switch, a console it has never believed in until now. EA's half-hearted FIFA 20 port reveals all you need to know about its relationship with the Nintendo Switch. Um, it's listing off a couple of bullet bullet points EA has uh, always had a complicated relationship with the Nintendo Switch now the publisher claims is pleased that the console has been a success uh, this is one of the most two-faced things that EA has ever done and that's saying a lot um, the Nintendo Switch faces a stiff challenge when the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X launches later this year but the console has already been a wild success so much so that EA recently remarked at how very pleased they were to see the console selling so well. At first glance, this seemed like a nice uh, enough sentiment. Uh, surely EA is surely just a congratulating a fellow gaming company, right? Not if you read between the lines. Uh, maybe they do PS, uh, PSBT multiplayer uh, PMPC. Hmm. Never know. So, let me see. EA might be gushing about the Nintendo Switch now, uh, but their actions prove that they never believed in the console. Definite, uh, definitive proof? Besides FIFA, they've only released two original titles for the console. And their support for FIFA has been half-hearted at best. FIFA 20, for example, is, gra is glaringly inferior... Uh, is glaringly inferior on the Switch compared to the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One. Uh... But, according to Nintendo Insider, EA plans to announce new Switch releases in the coming months. Apparently, the console is now big enough for EA to justify bothering to port their games to the system. Why the sudden change of attitude? Um, as with everything that motivates EA, it is because they've seen dollar signs where they didn't see them before. This is what I've been trying to talk about as far as the VR landscape with VR. It, um, VR has to go mainstream in order for EA to see enough dollar signs to bring their their games and their egregious microtransactions to the VR landscape. So I don't think we'll get a full blown game from um, from EA next generation, a full blown VR game. But I wouldn't doubt that if they make a game, it has a it has some sort of VR support. And then this, this right here says EA only jumps on the bandwagon once it proves profitable, uh, which <laughs> let me see. Let me, let me back up a couple. Uh, let's see golfer. You said ivory only allows you to use the PSVR headset to play PS, uh, PC VR games. Spartan God, you said, wait. Why is EA doing so much talking? Because the, the Switch is on fire. 
You know, um, it hasn't even been out three years, and they already broke 52 million, and um, if they don't show any signs of slowing down, that's why um, EA sees dollar signs over there now. So don't be surprised if you would probably see something like a a, a watered down version of um of Jedi Fallen Order over there. Uh, don't be surprised if Madden eventually makes his way over there. Um, and then you know when when the next iteration of FIFA comes out, um, you'll probably see a full blown version of it instead of whatever watered down version that they're talking about right now. Spartan, you said they're congratulating the Switch, and now they're talking next-gen consoles will blow our mind. Yeah, but, you know, but just like this article said, just like we've always known, we know what motivates EA. And um, and like I said, you know, the, the situation with um, with uh, Star Wars Battlefront, they, it had a, 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 a VR X-Wing mission on there. And my guess is that Sony either paid them to do it because this is when the, um, the PlayStation VR first came out and this is exclusive to the PlayStation VR. My guess is either Sony paid them to do it or Sony worked out them, you know, kind of like getting a little bit of a discount on the royalties of, of what they would have to pay Sony, you know. Um, so, and people were hoping, I remember when um, Battlefield 2 was, was first announced. People were hoping that it was going to be some kind of VR mode on Battlefront 2, and rumors were um, circulating that EA was exploring that possibility, but it never happened. And um, my, you know, my biggest guess was the biggest reason was is that the market wasn't big enough for them to take that chance. And what I originally said before still holds true that VR would have to go mainstream in order for EA to do something like make Madden fully playable in VR. But now, you know, VR has come far enough and it's growing fast enough that we really don't need EA. If they don't want to get on board with um, with VR, whatever, you know. Um, VR is moving along at a feverish pace. And I wouldn't be surprised if in the next couple of years somebody makes a full-blown football game it won't be an nfl game um but i wouldn't be surprised if somebody makes a full-blown football game uh in vr which i would love to see because it's there it can be done um i've done streams of a uh, vr sports challenge and um after playing that game i'm convinced that a fully fully playable uh football game in vr can be done so Ah, hold on. Let me read these last couple of uh, articles. Um, it says here. Uh, says, in the past, EA has claimed they didn't prioritize Switch development because Nintendo's first-party titles were too popular. Forgive me for not giving any credence to such a lame excuse. I suspect that it's really because EA thought it have a, a more challenging time exploiting Nintendo customers by flooding their games with loot boxes. At least until now. So uh, get ready for EA to learn hard into pretending like uh, pretending they like Nintendo all along. Uh, then make another rapid pivot again after they reined in for uh, sneaking microtransactions into games aimed at children and calling them surprise mechanics. Ah, oh shit <laughs> so yeah there's no doubt in my mind that that's going to happen now that they see that the nintendo switch is a gold mine um ea will eventually my, my ea will probably bring some of the games over uh to the nintendo switch and they will bring their egregious microtransactions with them shit um after making a billion dollars off of um microtransactions alone this past quarter you think they don't want to try to get some microtransaction money off of the nintendo community and um, I think once the um, once the PS5 hits and PlayStation VR 2 hits, that's when um, 
that's when I think, like I said before, I, I think that's when developers can come out with a game and release it. Third party developers, they'll be able to release it on both PC and the PS5 at the same time because I would be led to believe that they won't be um, handcuffed and trying to optimize the game and map out the controls and that kind of shit uh, for PlayStation VR. Therefore, that um, definitely uh, widens the opportunity for EA to sneak something in there. So uh, be prepared for within the next uh, five years for EA to finally put some kind of VR product out there. And if it does well, get ready for them to sneak some kind of microtransactions in there. I mean, Ubisoft found out the hard way that it was too early to try that seasonal shit because I think that's what they originally intended with um with uh, Space Junkies. I think they was getting ready to try that season pass shit with uh, Space Junkies, but it got off to a bad start because of how high overpriced that game was. Uh, golfer, thank you. You said pound that like button if you hadn't already. Spark God, uh, Sony should bring Mag back. Uh, they have the most uh, they have the most multiplayer games out of every uh, company ever in existence of gaming, and they're just sitting on them. I would love not only would I love for Mag to come back, I would love for it to have VR multiplayer. That would that would be dope. Also, Spark God, you said uh, including EA. Activision, Ubisoft, Bethesda, all of them. Yeah, loot box VR, uh, special surprise mechanics uh, VR edition. Yeah, that's um, same thing. Not just um, not just EA, but I, I said that I said that a while ago. Again, for the millionth time, that VR needs to go mainstream in order for us to see a Madden fully playable in VR, in order for us to see a Call of Duty playable in VR. But if it ever gets to the point where they see that the market has finally become big enough, not nah, not nah, let me say saying that the market has become big enough. No, nah, that's a professional way of putting it. Once they see that VR is a gold mine and they can grab their picks and axes and go into that gold mine and start you know tearing nuggets off that wall, that's when they're gonna get into get into VR and they're gonna bring their egregious microtransactions with them. So. If, so that's the bottom line. If VR ever gets big enough that they see that they can go ahead and um, make the jump and uh, get involved in VR, there's no way that they're going to leave their microtransactions at home. They're bringing that shit with them. Uh, uh, Spartan God. Then again, we have PUBG and Fortnite, which the latter is cause uh, casual, so MAG wouldn't do well. Hmm. Man, I, I can't really see I'm sitting here trying to find a reason why I think Mag didn't do well. The way I the way I didn't, you know I I don't know. Only thing I can really think of off the top of my head is I think at the time that uh, Mag came out, maybe uh, Call of Duty over on the 360 was still, you know, the king of the hill. So if you look at it that way, you know, maybe it could have been just timing. But after they brought back, after they did The Last of Us remastered, after they did... Uh, Blue Point did Shadow of the Colossus and did that game over again. Uh, who's to say that they wouldn't do Mag over again? Yeah, Impatient Fire Mag was way ahead of his time. I think what was it, a hundred? No, it was two hundred. Two hundred multiplayer. You know, we talked about this before. What I would definitely love to see. What I would definitely love to see come back is PlayStation Home in VR. Um, there's no doubt in my mind, if, if Sony was to bring back PlayStation Home and have it in VR, I think it would be a huge success 
because um I think overall in the PlayStation VR, I think um I think uh, uh Rec Room is doing pretty good. And then over on the PC side, I know VR chat is doing pretty good. Um Big Screen is on the rise. You know, I don't know how well Rec Room is doing on PC, but I know but I, I know that uh, VR chat is huge on PC, so there's no doubt in my mind if Sony were to bring back PlayStation Home, um, and it doesn't even have to, I don't even necessarily think it has to be in VR, but I do believe if they did do it in VR, you know, uh, give you an option, because um, I didn't even know, like, like um, VR chat, you could play that flat screen. I think... Um, when my Alienware computer was gone, you know, when I had to send it back to Best Buy, uh, my son was using this computer right here to play VR chat flat screen. Hold on, folks. I'm thirsty. I got to go grab another drink. telling you i don't know what it is about these mineral waters they are the most delicious kind of nastiest things i ever drank i don't know what it is about these things but when these things are ice cold i guzzle them I'm definitely going to finish the night off with some more Beat Saber before I go to bed. We're already working our way to 11 o'clock. So, give a shout out to uh, Craig Harris. Um, he did a podcast earlier today. And uh, it helped me get through my day as usual. You know, when my YouTube friends go live and do a podcast while I'm at work. Um, although I'm not necessarily able to join the chat, it still helps me get through my day because it provides content for me. So, big shout out to Craig Harris. And, uh, wow, I don't think I got too much more than that. I can take a quick look at, um... N4G, see what we got. Oh, you know what? Let me check Twitter again because I was sent, um, an article was sent to me. So let me check uh, Twitter real quick by Mr. Uh, Let's see here. CD Projekt Red supposedly tried VR for Cyberpunk 2077, but says VR is a niche that really isn't viable yet. So, Nicholas Taylor, what is good? How you doing? Uh, Jay Swoles, you said PS Home and, um, and uh, Welcome Park were, were cool for what they were. There's no doubt in my mind that if they brought them back. Because you had that mall in there and you had that movie screen in there. See, like, PlayStation Home had everything that's already out there right now. But it was all, to me, it was all under one roof. Because you, uh, with PlayStation Home, even though they were only playing trailers, you could still go into the theater and sit and watch trailers uh, you could walk around the mall. You could sit at a chess table and play chess with a live person. You could go inside the arcade and um, play some of the arcade games that was in there. You could go bowling against live people inside uh, PlayStation Home. There was uh, stores in there like clothing stores, furniture stores, stuff like that to customize your avatar, customize your home. Uh, a lot of that stuff was there. Uh, I think there was even an, an amusement park there. And 
VR has a lot of those aspects, but it's not everything under one roof. It's this one has this, this one has that. Um, you know, the rec room's got a lot of, uh, I think uh, it's got a lot of laser tag type games in there. Uh, VR chat's got a lot of games that even has its own form of um, uh, Beat Saber. And then, you know, big screen is just pretty much uh, for viewing content. Um, but all that stuff was under, run, under one roof with the PlayStation Home. And in my opinion, if they brought it back exactly the way it was on the PS3, except it being VR, I think that would be huge for the PlayStation. Code Yogurt was good. <laughs> That's got to be a joke. You said try try to blow on the analog stick of your touch controller. It might fix it. <laughs> um. Yeah, something was clearly wrong with that that controller because um long story short again, I thought there was I thought there could have been a problem with my computer. I thought there could have been a problem with my headset. I thought it could have been a situation where my computer didn't have all the necessary updates. And then I took that controller and paired it with the um, Oculus Quest, and the same thing was happening on the Quest. It was still doing the same malfunctions over there. Um, Oculus support finally got in touch with me today and told me to take the battery out and let it sit for three minutes because that's supposed to reset the controller. Um, I tried that. It still did not work, and I just said, hell with it. That's what warranties are for, so I packed it up and took it back to Best Buy. So... Uh, they took it back and um, just ordered a replacement for me, and it'll be here on Friday. So I will have a brand new Oculus Rift S on Friday. But I'm cool, though, because like I said, you know, the, the quest will get me through until then. So let me uh, let me read this article about Cyberpunk exploring uh, the possibility of VR on paper. Cyberpunk 77 seems like it could be a pretty good fit for uh, VR functionality. Uh, no one should get their hopes up for such a possibility, however. While CD Projekt Red once gave virtual reality the old college try, one studio lead does not think the technology is viable yet. During an interview with On MSFT, uh, John Mamias, head of the company's Krako Studio, however you pronounce that, divulged that VR is something the team once considered. In fact, CD Projekt Red even had access to VR dev kits, uh, though Mamias didn't specifically, he didn't specify which. Uh, regardless, because the platform itself remains experimental and niche, the studio sees no reason to invest time and resources into that kind of project. When asked if the studio had considered bringing Cyberpunk 2077 to VR platforms in the future, Mamias replied, we tried, we were thinking about VR, but we're not doing anything. Uh, we're not doing anything with VR. We got the VR dev kits, but some things work in VR. But I think it's not really viable yet. Uh, you're not making a lot of money in VR yet. It's very experimental. It's very experimental and niche. I would like to. I like VR, but we're not doing anything with it yet. So translation. Uh, in my eyes, I see that as. Maybe they'll do something else in VR, just not this game. Um, Mamaya's statement doesn't outright rule out the possibility, though. It appears as if the company has made up its mind in some respect. Should Cyberpunk 2077 ever receive VR functionality, though? It is unlikely to happen in the near future. In announcing the title's recent delay, CD Projekt Red also noted the game's multiplayer suite will be postponed. Uh, let me see. In this interview, Mamias also shared more details about the title's story, uh, street stories. Most notably, he revealed the game will feature about 75 of these quests in total, each of them uniquely designed. Um, let me see. Cyberpunk will come to PS4, PC, and Xbox platforms later this year on September 17th. So... Uh, so they got VR dev kits already, but, uh, hmm, again, that could change 
once uh that could change once the PS5 comes out. Um, Cold yogurt, you said no, I'm not joking. My knuckles stick, and it's worthy. So uh, it is wonky. So I blew on it to try to push uh, fire in one direction, then blew. <laughs> uh, you know, actually, is 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 ridiculous as that sound. It actually it actually crossed my mind. But I said, the hell with it. That's what I paid for a warranty for. So I just said, I'll just have to deal with the fact that I'll be without uh, an Oculus Rift for a few days. I wasn't using it that much anyway because of how much I play the Quest. So it won't kill me to be without it for a few days. Nicholas Taylor, thoughts on Predator Hunting Ground. Day one cop for me. Now, here's where I got lost in translation on the P on the Predator thing. Uh, I thought Predator Hunting Ground and Predator VR were the same game. But apparently not, because I think on I think on state of play, if if I'm not mistaken, on one of those state of plays when they first showed the Predator, I thought it was Predator VR that they showed on that state of play. So I was led to believe that a Predator VR game was coming to the PlayStation VR. Uh, but Predator Hunting Ground, yeah, not interested in it. Predator VR. Yes, I am interested in that, and unfortunately, um, it appears that the game is not coming out until 2021. That is very disappointing. Um, you know, it's it's posted on Steam. It was for pre-order, but I don't know. Uh, I still wouldn't rule out the possibility of Predator VR coming to Steam in early access, you know, late later this year, but 2021, oh my God, you know. Cold Yogurt, what's up, Golf? Yep, it helps. I was wondering why my DS uh, DualShock 4 controller stick before I would keep buying extra controllers. I use it for my PS4 controller, and it works. Yeah. So... Well, it's too late now, because it's already... I sent it back to Best Buy. So, I mean, yeah, as ridiculous as that might sound, it did cross my mind to try to blow on the thumbstick to see what would happen. I don't even like the way that sounds. But um, I did try to... I, it crossed my mind to do that, but I'm like, even if it works, it'll probably only be a temporary fix. So, why not just take it back and get a brand new one? So, along with EA and Activision, a lot of these companies have to see VR as a gold mine before they get on board. But um, EA, to me, EA and Activision, they could have took the Bethesda route. They could have brought some of their um, old IPs back to life by giving them VR support. Because Bethesda did it with, um, with Doom and um, Skyrim in fallout 4 uh, they brought all those games they extended the life of all those games by giving vr support to them and i understand that skyrim has done fairly well you know for for vr i'm curious about fallout 4 um you know that was one of the games i gave away this past weekend and um and i'm curious about it Nicholas Taylor, what is the lowest price you've seen PSVR? Um, Cold Yogurt is right, two hundred bucks. Um, not you know, not just at Best Buy because I think these are like Sony authorized sales. So every time that I've seen it at Best Buy, you know, every time I've seen it on sale for two hundred bucks, it was at Best Buy, at Walmart, at Target. Um, it might not necessarily happen at the same time. You know, Best Buy might have it for two hundred. You know this week you know and then a month or two later walmart might do it that kind of thing kind of staggering them out but yes i have seen the playstation vr on sale for 200 bucks which i guess speaking of the playstation vr that's uh i'm still watching ebay to try to catch a playstation vr on ebay because as far as refurbish uh, PlayStation VR headsets it seems like everybody's sold out you know the only way I'll be able to get one is to get a new one 
I'm certainly not going to pay $350 for a new one with the move controllers when I already have move controllers. And I'm certainly not going to pay $350 for one knowing that the PS5 is going to be coming out um, this year. And even though it's unlikely, there's still the possibility of PSVR 2 launching this year. So, so no, um, the, the easiest route for me to take is to just um, get a headset through eBay. So, Cold Yogurt, I just finished The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners. PSVR players are in for something special. Yeah, that game is that game is supposed to come to PlayStation VR sometime this year, isn't it? Um, hmm. I think they'll. Um, I think the biggest thing that you know the PlayStation VR community will probably like about the Walking Dead Saints and Sinners. It's probably the physics about how um, how interactive the game is probably going to be. PUG, what's up? Pug, what's up? Yeah, the Walking Dead Saints and Sinners. And, um, I mean, the hype train has kind of gone away for Saints and Sinners. Nobody's really talking about it that much anymore. So now I'm at the point where I'm kind of wanting to play the waiting game and see if the game goes on sale. Most notably at the Oculus store. So if I buy it, I can get it by way of uh, get it for cross buy and get it on the Quest as well. Uh, Cold Yogurt, you said I seen PSVR port team in uh, the credits of The Walking Dead. You know what? Um, the Walking Dead Saints and Sinners, I think that game on the PlayStation VR, that game probably has the best chance of knocking Resident Evil off the, um, off the mountaintop, you know, knocking them off the stool. So, because like right now on the PlayStation VR... I don't think any horror games out there compare to um, Resident Evil. So if any game can compete against Resident Evil on PlayStation VR, uh, Saints and Sinners would probably be that game. Uh, you, Pug, you said you heard about my bad VR day. Yeah, it was a bad VR day. Uh, Oculus controller took a crap and my PSVR headset took a crap. Uh, I've already addressed the situation with the uh, Oculus Rift S. Um, it was under warranty, so uh, I'm getting a replacement on Friday. Uh, the situation with the PlayStation VR, no, it was not under warranty. I bought it from Best uh, from Target, and I opted not to put a um, a warranty on it because I didn't want to deal with a third party. Uh, if there was a problem, I didn't want to have to deal with this bullshit where I have to call a 1-800 number and then get directed to this, get directed to that, uh, send it to them, and then they have to send it somewhere and all this kind of shit. And then I went out a headset for like two months. I just figured that, um, number one, Sony has, a, in my opinion, I think Sony has a track record for um, building durable hardware. There's, you know, there's you know their uh, hardware isn't known to take craps or get faulty like um, Xboxes do so I, I had faith in the quality of uh, Sony's um product and um, and I just figured that if something happens then I'll just cross that bridge when I get there and I'm finally at that point uh, Nicholas Taylor predictions on the price of the wireless PSVR 2 with all the bells and whistles day one predictions if it is wireless, if it has eye tracking, I figure the resolution on it is probably going to be um, 1440, because at, at this point now, 1440 is the um, is the minimum. So you don't uh, in, in today's climate with VR, if you make a headset and it doesn't have 
I mean, shit, I, I think VR has come along far enough where people are looking at 1440 like it's, like it's 720. Because um, a lot of these, these newer headsets that is popping up, whether it's for enterprise or whether it's for home, um, are starting to come out with, you know, 4K resolutions, you know, with 2160p. So, I don't know if Sony would... Uh, PSVR 2, I don't know if Sony... I figure it's going to be 1440 at the very minimum. But, you, you know, I don't know if they would go with 1440, you know, as a cost-cutting move. So, so let's let's just say it's, it's 1440. Um, so, the headset is wireless. Uh, 1444 resolution. And the controllers are going to be a big thing right there. That's that's another thing right there, uh, Nicholas Taylor. Um, there's been a couple of patents. Um, there's been like two or three patents for PlayStation VR controllers. One of them was a controller um, that almost looked like you've got a detonator in your hand. And um, I guess this controller is uh, supposed to be pressure sensitive. That it responds to how hard you squeeze it. Um, there was also a patent that we've seen for... Um, for a controller that looks like a bracelet that goes around your arm that has a you know a bunch of cameras on it which would be their version of hand tracking um so i think that could come into play for how much it's going to cost so uh so let's let's go with this if it's a uh wireless headset 1440 resolution and um it's got those bracelet type controllers with the cameras uh built into the uh, bracelets I say we're looking at uh, 400 maybe 500 at the most now if they go with this pressure sensitive controller I say we might be looking at um, 350 400 but if they go with a 4k resolution then we might be looking at 500 again uh, the question is, though, the big question is, is uh, where is Sony's mind at right now? Um, was the current PSVR kind of something that Sony wanted to do to dip their toes in the VR water and then make their big move with PSVR 2? Because I think that's what Microsoft did with the uh, original Xbox. I think that was just Microsoft um, introducing themselves to the video game industry. And I think Microsoft intended to make its big move with the 360, um, and which they did, you know, regardless of uh, the red rings, all that kind of stuff. So the question is, is Sony looking to make their big move with PSVR 2? Um, if, if they're looking to make a big move with PSVR 2 and, like, try to get that to the mainstream, then I see the headset being $400 or less. Or... If they go the route where they basically trying to tell you that you're getting a premium headset and it's not for everybody, then they could go the $500 route uh, with the, uh, you know, basically with the expectations that the, head, the headset would probably get off to a very slow start. So I think a lot of things come into play when trying to guess how much Sony's going to charge for the next headset. Um, cold yogurt. I feel Sony is after affordability for mass adoption, so don't get your hopes up. Um, so if, yeah, if you put it that way, those bracelets uh, with the cameras in them, probably not going to happen. Um, probably go with some kind of conventional thumbsticks that you know controllers that might resemble something like the Oculus Touch with thumbsticks in them. Uh, if they if they go that route. And they probably go with the 1440 resolution. Then we're probably looking at $400 or less. And Jay Swoles, you say uh, Sony used to be lenient on returns. Not sure how they are now. Well, I've had this headset for well over a year now. So it's probably past the manufacturer's warranty. But let me show you guys something.
you guys are going to laugh at me when I show you this. You guys are definitely going to laugh at me when I show you this. So, uh, this is the PSVR headset that took a dump on me. Now, I think um, the PlayStation VR as well as the Oculus Rift CV1, um, I think they definitely have some issues with the um, wires coiling up. And... Uh, now, I don't know which is worse, the Oculus Rift CV1 or the PSVR. So, to show you what I had to do to deal with the uh, wires coiling up. So, look at this right here. Look, um, look how bad this thing is coiled up. That's for the uh, PlayStation VR. So, let me show you what I had to do. So, I had to tape I think I taped about six feet worth of this cord. So right here, this is the PlayStation VR cord that I had to um, that I had to tape up. Look how much of this shit! I like I said, I taped up about six feet worth of this shit. And um, all the way up here, this is uh, this is where it finally stopped. So, so let me coil that shit up for y'all, so y'all can see just how much of this um, cord I had to tape up. So I'll put it to you in that perspective. Speaking of which, hopefully uh, Titanfall Princess received her headset today. So, look at this shit. Look how much of this PlayStation VR cord that I had to tape up. And that's still not the end of it. There's still, like right here, um, there's still about a good another foot of this cord that's still coiled up. So, um, yeah, that's a, this was really annoying. Um... So, for the most part, in the beginning, wires did not bother me when it came to the VR headsets. Uh, the wires did not bother me in the beginning until um, the CV1 and the PlayStation VR cords started coiling up on me. Then it became a nuisance because, um, because they were coiled up so bad, it shortened how much leeway I had. Um... And I would have to step on the cord with one foot and pull on it like this, you know, to try to um, straighten the cord out. And, uh, yeah, golfer, it definitely makes the cord heavy, but it was the only solution that I could think of. Because, like, you, you should have seen how coiled that cord was before I put all that tape on it. Uh, now, the Rift S doesn't, it doesn't coil that bad, at least mine didn't. Uh, my son was saying that his is starting to coil up, but I don't know. But I think that's because uh, he probably uses his a lot more than I use mine. So, um, so a PlayStation VR 2 is wireless. I think that would be huge. Ah, excuse me. Uh, Nicholas, you said um, you said if uh, PSVR bombs next gen and Sony drops out of the business, is the VR industry doomed? Hell no. Nah. The the VR industry is far from dead for two reasons, and you know, and um, I've said it before that even if VR never makes mainstream, it's never going to die because every year at these electronic shows, um, some sort of AR, um, augmented reality, mixed reality, or virtual reality headset is always at the forefront. 
uh, when when these um, manufacturers want to show the latest shiny gadgets somewhere in there, AR glasses or something is always in there. So it seems like the way things are going right now, it seems like several companies are working on AR glasses right now. So in that sense, no, that's one of the reasons why uh, VR is not going to die. Not only that, I believe a lot of these manufacturers that's working on these AR glasses right now are looking to um, integrate, you know, things like Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and all that kind of stuff into these um, uh, into these AR glasses, um, uh, Skype, Skype like calls where you make a Skype call to someone and you might have their holographic image right there in front of you. So it's almost like they're standing right there talking to you. Um, and I think the, uh, I think these AR glasses moving forward, I don't know how many years it's going to take, but I think AR, um, AR glasses are going to re I think they're going to replace the smartphone as we know it. Um, these right here, I think they're going to be gone in about, I ain't going to say they're going to be gone, but I think, um, like these glasses right here, you see me wearing, that's going to be your smartphone in about 10 years. You know, I think, um, no, nah, I don't think it's going to have a bunch of buttons on it, but I think it's, you know, um, it's probably going to have some sort of hand tracking where you, you know, doing all this kind of shit to bring up your, mem your um, menus through these glasses. So, uh, in that aspect, no. Uh, VR is not going to die and then in the in the current landscape right now the other reason why VR is not going to die is because of the Oculus Quest um, I think the, the Oculus Quest is having uh, pretty good success I, I would like to use the word tremendous but I can't use the word tremendous because uh, they are not in terms of um in terms of the pace of the um, headsets that they're selling they're not that far behind what the PlayStation VR. What? Well, let me let me scratch that. I think they're ahead of what PlayStation VR was at this at this point in its life cycle. But the reason why I won't use the word uh, tremendous is because uh, because of the shortages that they've been going through pretty much, you know, all of 2019. I think one of those shortages was manufactured. I think it might have been a false shortage on their part. But I think once um, the quest took off, you know, uh, like gangbusters, then I think the problem became real, you know, that they're having a hard time keeping up uh, with the man for the Oculus Quest. So because of that, like VR ain't going nowhere because I think, um, I think three years from now, at the rate of people, like like these, these um, Facebook groups that I'm part of, People are getting Oculus Quest every day. Like one group that I'm part of has 33,000 members, and every day you see a new person getting an Oculus Quest. And I think we could see a situation where, like, especially, especially if Oculus ever knocks that thing down to um, 300 bucks, if they ever did that shit, I would, I, I would think in about three, four years, the majority of customers on the Oculus Quest are going to be mainstream people and not the hardcore people like us. So, Jay Swoles, you said that's crazy and eventually you get shorts in your wire. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. So, That's another reason why I'm hoping PlayStation VR comes out this year, Jay Swoles, is because I really would like to be done with that headset. Not a bad headset, but I'm ready. I'm ready for something else. You know, um, if Sony, whenever the next PlayStation VR headset comes out, if it's not wireless, at least make some kind of cord that won't coil up. Cold Yogurt, you said flat screens is limited to the TV screen. I wanted to see more game, and now with VR is possible. No, you, you're doing more than seeing the game with VR. You inside the game. <clears throat> I said this before. Some of my dreams have come true through VR. Some things that I've always dreamt about doing as a kid that I knew I would probably never get a chance to do has happened in VR. Uh, Nicholas Taylor, if I don't see $100 PSVR bundle this year, then I'll wait to get PSVR 2 day one. It's a part of gaming I have yet to experience. Um, you are not going to see a $100 PSVR bundle from anywhere. 
I think your best chance of um, getting an entire PSVR bundle for a hundred bucks is once um, once PSVR two hits. If that takes off like gangbusters and everybody pretty much forgets about the current VR headset, then you might be able to go to um, eBay or Craigslist or something like that and catch one for a hundred bucks. But right now, nah. You know, and um. Uh, and with VR being on the rise, I'm I'm led to believe that some people are snatching up those refurbished headsets that GameStop and Play and Trade and all those kind of places had because they're all sold out. You know, the uh, there's no GameStops like within a 50 mile radius of where I live that has a um, refurbished PSVR headset. And neither does Play and Trade. In fact, they put me on a call list. It was like when we get one in, we'll call you. Now, there is a bunch of them on eBay, though. Uh, some of the prices that people are asking for is ridiculous. Some of them are reasonable. Cold yogurt. You said uh, it's a VR is, that, is, is like a Nintendo. It's worth the money. Uh, uh, Leaf. Bro, I'm actually selling some good stuff now. I think I might be able to get a VR soon. I hope you get one. I really do because... Um, I think you won't be disappointed. Impatient fire, you said me too. My flying a fighter plane and uh, X uh, X Queen dreams have come true for me. In, yeah, in VR. You know, the first time, first time I ever played that um, X Wing VR mission. That was the first thing. That was the first experience I saw in VR when I saw something the size that it was meant to be seen in. Like um, <clears throat> the X-Wing VR mission on the PlayStation VR, the way it starts out, you see that Imperial Walker going by. And I looked at that thing as it was walking by and that thing looked like it had to be about 100 feet tall. That right there had got me. And then... Um, you have your X-Wing fighter that's like parked off to the side and then you get inside the V, you know, when you get up close to the X-Wing fighter, um, you know, that X-Wing fighter, you know, the movies lead you to believe that those X-Wing fighters are probably about the size of a, of, of a car, but no, when you get up close to those X-Wing fighters, no, those things are much longer than a car and uh, much wider with the wingspan and then sitting inside that X-Wing um, I probably say the biggest thing, the biggest two features sitting inside that X-Wing that really got me was, uh, hitting that button for the targeting computer that comes out over your shoulder. And then it turns out in front of you like that, just like the, just like Star Wars, a new hope that got me. And, um, when you hit that button and you hear that, you know, other, um, X-Wings expanding that got me too. Um, and then, um, The last thing that really got me on the X-Wing mission is when I saw how big one of those um, Star Destroyers was. That right there, that was one of the things that made me, like, curious. Like, as new games come out where they intend something to be big, for you to see it in this actual size, that's the kind of stuff that was like, you know, whoa. Uh, let's see here. Leaf. Um, you said, I don't care. The Rift or the Quest, they're both great. I hate to say this, Leaf. But if money's going to be a real big issue for you, excuse me, <coughs> I would probably recommend getting the Oculus Quest because you can still use the Oculus Link cable or some or some sort of transfer cable to plug it up to your um, computer and still get PC quality and PC performance out of the Quest because basically, uh, basically, you're 
Oculus Quest turns into a Rift once you use that link cable. Um, and then you can unhook it and take it with you on the go. So you would basically um, have, it, it, it would be like having a Nintendo Switch in VR. But, um, you know, I, I have both. But um, I think you might get a, I, I have no way of backing this up to prove it. I think you might get a little bit of a better native performance coming from the Oculus Rift. Um, but like I said, um, I think getting the Oculus Quest, if you already have a PC, like I said, that's going to be like having a Nintendo Switch. You'll have the ability to take the headset with you and play games with you while you're on the go. And then when you're at home, you plug the, um, by way of the link cable, you plug it into your PC and you're going to get PC type performance and quality. So, uh, Leaf, you said I already have a gaming PC too. Yeah, then I would probably recommend the Quest. Cold Yogurt, you said I double dipped and got No Man's Sky and PC. Can't wait to check it out. I did too. I, I did get it for um, PSVR and PC, but my PSVR version of it, I gave it to Titanfall Princess when I sent her that headset. So I gave her, uh, I sent her Astrobot and No Man's Sky and a, a copy of Man of Steel in 3D. So uh, hopefully she should have got it today because it was supposed to arrive today. Um, I haven't you know, I haven't checked. You know, I have to go back and um check the tracking number. You said do the do the graphics change though with the quest? Yeah, from what I understand. So from what I'm hearing, when you use that link cable on your quest, the graphics become much better than the quest, but not quite as good as the Rift S. So I guess like in between. But I guess if you want the better graphics, then go with the Rift S. But if you want the um, the mobility as well as the options, then I would go with the Quest. See, Slim, what's good? Um, Leaf, you said, who, who says that? Uh, Jace, uh, Jace Wolves, official Padawan, Anakin, and Luke wanted to be pilots. Uh, let me see here. Golfer, if your PC, if your uh, if your PC is VR ready, then the Quest is my suggestion on on the way to go. And uh, so, in uh, Cold Yo, you said I like high end graphics for VR. Yeah, definitely. I'm definitely a um, a graphics whore because. Um, I guess since I'm, you know, since I'm kind of living out some of my some of my childhood dreams through VR, uh, the better the graphics, you know, the more photorealistic the game looks, uh, the more the more realistic the game will feel to me, and the the more it will uh, interest me because. Um, I think I still believe that Lone Echo still has the best graphics out there for uh, for VR. Uh, now I do think it's possible that when when Half Life Alex comes out, I I do think it's possible that Half Life Alex could end up having um, uh, better ba better graphics than uh, Lone Echo. But right now, uh, I feel like uh, Lone Echo has the best graphics out there. But there is some there is some games on the way that's gonna that's gonna look interesting like. Um, like that lo-fi, you know, it's, um, you know, what we've seen of it right now, you know, it looks like Blade Runner in, in VR. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see what that looks like. It looks like that's going to have some pretty damn good graphics, too. Um, Lone Echo 2 is coming out. That's going to have good graphics. Um, we know about Half-Life Alex. Hell, I think uh, I think Iron Man VR is gonna have pretty good graphics. So, golfer, you said uh, I I had a 1080 Ti, 
but got the 2080 Super, and I love the new experiences. Um, Leaf, you said the Oculus Go kind of hurts my eyes. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. They like with the Oculus Quest, they do you will get what they call VR face where it, you know, where it does press up against your face and leaves a little bit of pressure on your face. Uh so um you could end up having that VR print on your face <laughs> for a little bit. But, you know, eventually I'm going to go ahead and get, you know, eventually I'm going to go ahead and put together some of this uh Franken some of this Franken Quest shit that's out there. Eventually I'll get to it. You know, I knew I was well aware of that Franken Quest shit long ago, but uh, when I got my son, you know, when we first discussed what the options were, and he said go ahead and sell the Quest in order for me to be able to get him a uh, Rift S, uh, I was like, nope, no Franken Quest because I don't know if I'm going to keep the Quest, but something within me said keep that Quest, and I'm so glad I kept it. So we are working on 11.30. And I think I'm going to play some more um, Beat Saber before I go to bed. I played uh, Michael Jackson's PYT. Pretty young thing. <laughs> played that um, on, on Beat Saber. Played that on Expert. Man, that was a workout. Let me tell you. Um... Got a lot of Michael Jackson songs. Beat it. Uh, Black and white. Uh, Smooth criminal. Dirty Diana. I picked up a lot of songs. Um, that's off the top of my head. You know, picked up a couple of Eminem songs on there. A um, couple of old school R&B songs. Cool in the gang. So, um, and with no wires to worry about, Beat Saber has never been more fun. Ah, uh, Nicholas Taylor. All right, my brother. Nice talking with you. Nice VR talking with you. <laughs> I'll catch you on the next one. Much love. Hey, I appreciate it, man. Thanks for coming by. I appreciate it. Um, you said, oh, I mean, the Oculus Go uh, screen hurts my eyes. I can't see the pixels. Okay. Um, and golfer, you said it was the card or the index. So because the index uh, was on a waiting list, I said I'd wait till next holiday to get the index. Yeah. And then picture fire, you said I would like a game like Anthem and VR next gen. I'm waiting to see. To tell you the truth, I'm waiting to see what happens. You know, now that EA is kind of conceded and they're going to start letting their games come over to Steam. I'm wondering if somebody's going to jump up and make some kind of VR mod for one of these games. So a game like Anthem and VR would probably be the only thing that would interest me in playing it. Code Yogurt, you said, Nicholas, hope you get a headset. You're one step closer to entering the Matrix. Yes, sir. He would be right on that. And Jay, Jay Swoles, you said, uh, PYT is my jam. Man, when I played that game on um, Expert, my arms was all over the place, you know, trying to um, play that game. But, man. What else? Uh, Don't Stop Till You Get Enough. I was playing that on Beat Saber. So, man, I really, I really miss doing the Friday Night Jam when I uh, did that show. The one night I did that live, that was so fun. Un, I think because of this copyright crap, I couldn't do another uh, Friday Night Jam live. I think the only way I could do another one of those shows is I would have to um, upload a pre-recorded video. Because I think YouTube comes down harder on people for violating the rules when you're doing a live stream versus a recorded video. Ah, golfer, you said uh, a sweet sticky thing, my Ohio player hits. Yeah, no doubt. 
Throw a couple of barcades hits in there. Yeah, that's that old school stuff that I'm talking about. You know, you know what time it is, golf. All them old school, all them old school hits from the um, 70s, early 80s. So, damn. I went overboard again. I said I was only going to be on about an hour because uh, the original plan was for me to be done by 11 o'clock. So, um, so I could jump on the quest and get some gaming in. So, yeah. Yeah, it gets, hell yeah. Yeah, I think I'm going to, I should get my ass in bed by midnight, but I think I'm gonna stay up another hour, uh, play some Beat Saber, and I think play some more Racket Fury. I'm getting I'm getting better and better at Racket Fury, so uh, I'm loving that game more and more too. So uh, Leaf, when you get a headset, um, I definitely if you like uh, competitive sports and you like table tennis, I definitely gotta recommend Racket Fury. Definitely a great game. Uh, actually, Jay Swole's Man in the Mirror was one of the songs that I had found for Beat Saber, but I didn't, I didn't uh, download it. I might go ahead and grab it because you can download the songs. Um, you can do it right from the Quest. I don't have to hook it up to the computer. Um, because there's a BMBF file in there inside the Unknown Sources uh, folder. You hit that and boom, it opens it up, take you straight to Beast Saber, and then just go through there and just start downloading songs into the quest. You know, download them into the quest and then hit sync, sync with Beat Saber, and it goes into the library. But uh, I think I gotta go, I gotta go look for some more um, custom sabers though. I'm using those Minecraft sabers, but those things are so damn big that it's a little bit of a distraction. So I want to go back and um, get some different kind of um, uh, sabers. Maybe something that looked like a samurai sword. Uh, let's see here. You said the GT's Discord has about two to 500 people just as uh, uh, for VR help in there. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So, uh, I bet Thriller would give you a workout. Um, it did. You know, um, Golfer, I, I, um, I implore you to go back and check out one of my videos, uh, the Friday Night Jam. I was playing I was playing Thriller in that one. And it gave me quite the workout. So uh, if you want to um, go back and check out my video, the Friday Night Jam, uh, I was playing a bunch of um, old school cuts in there. And I was playing some of the latest uh, rap hits in there, too. Um, definitely check that out. You know, and I was even not only that, I was even dancing, too. Um, you know, like I was uh, I was uh, doing hip hop hooray. You know, it's like the way the um the way the cubes come at you, you got to jump from side to side to slice them, and because of that, it makes you look like you're dancing when you're not really trying to dance. But but I was dancing on there. Um, I think when I did uh Happy by Pharrell, I was kind of dancing as I was chopping the cubes. So go check it out. Um, Friday Night Jam, check it out. So hopefully you can like just go to my page. And hopefully just type in Friday Night Jam and hopefully it'll be there. I mean, I didn't take the video down, so it should still be there. And um, and I didn't get, I don't think I got hit with any uh, copyright infringements. I think if I did, I think um, you can still, if you're in North America, you can still view it. If you're in, if you're in um, Europe and I got hit with the copyright, or that copyright crap, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. But um, you should still be able to see it, though, bottom line is. So definitely check it out. Let me know what you think when you check it out. So just like leave a comment or something. Let me know what you think. You said one of my favorite Mike songs. Yeah, definitely. 
you know, and then I play these in like now I'm to the point where I play just about everything on expert, not because of necessarily that I'm good at it, it's just that it gives you a great workout. Um, you can't go wrong by playing Beat Saber on um, on expert, you know. Um, pistol Whip's a good workout, but Pistol Whip to me, um, something about that game works your core, it works your legs. I think, um, in the case of Beat Saber, you just get you just all uh, all around just burning calories. You said Dance Machine would be dope and add the lights. Hey, you know what? I think um, because of me, Oculus is getting ready to sell a few more Oculus Quests because um, now that I've got some of these old school and some of these new school songs downloaded into my Quest, I know it's going to be easy to take these things, um, take that quest over to barbecues and family outings and shit like that. Like, here, try this, you know. Wait a minute, where you get this from? Uh, Leaf, you said, I'm on Craigslist and there is an Oculus Rift near me for $175. That is probably the Oculus Rift CB1. Uh, 175 bucks for that is not bad, but be warned. As far as I'm concerned, that is last gen VR, so it's gonna look good, but you're gonna see a slight amount of blur around the edges, around the outside edges. Uh, with the Rift S, um, that 1440p may not sound like much, but it's big. Um, the Oculus Rift S is just crystal clear. I, I cannot say enough. You know, the, the background, everything that you would see in the distance that would be blurry on the PlayStation VR is crystal clear on the Oculus Rift S. Um, but, uh, um, and with the CV1, this one that you see, it probably has, it's probably the CV1 with the external sensors. But, um, if you want to experience uh, VR enough where uh, you're not concerned about, you know, the slight bit of blur around the outside edges, and, um, you know, then I say go for it. Yeah, no inside-out tracking either. I have to be honest, um, golfer. I still think that the external sensors on the CV1 still gives it, I still believe that because of that, it has better tracking than the Rift S. But the Rift S has proven that inside-out tracking does work. Leaf, you said, is the little blur that bad? No, it's not. It's barely noticeable. Now, the PSVR, on the other hand, some of those games, the blur is awful. Like uh, Drive Club, for instance, on the PlayStation VR... That blur is awful. Says uh, Pug. Okay, I'm going to go see y'all later in the VR gang. All right. Hey, thanks for dropping by, Pug. I really appreciate it. You know, I mean, jeez, uh, I appreciate all I appreciate all you guys being here for uh, nearly two hours. You know, and I'm starting to get a little bit raspy, so we get ready to get out of here. And uh, we'll see what comes up this week as far as news goes. It's a little bit um, disappointing that Iron Man VR got delayed because uh, we'd only have 26 days to go before it comes out. He said, I don't think I'll be getting PSVR. It's not bad. I mean, not like not every single game is going to be blurry on the PlayStation VR, but I'm definitely telling you the, the Rift S is just crystal clear and um, in the in the Oculus Rift CV1 isn't bad either. So, hey, but um, if that $175 for that Oculus Rift is right up your alley, I'd say go for it. Just make sure it works before you buy it. So, yeah, it's working its way towards midnight. Let me get ready to get on out of here, y'all. 
and uh, grab a bite to eat and then um, go burn some of this food off on the quest. And um, I definitely want to thank everybody for tuning in. I really appreciate it. As always, you guys uh, made this podcast go as long as it did because you guys are always, uh, um, you know, giving me your thoughts, communicating through the chat. And I definitely appreciate it. Right there, he hit it right there on the head. Uh, Leaf Golfer just said it right there. By going with the Rift, you'll get access to a much, much larger library because you'll have access to the Oculus Store as well as the hundreds of games that's on Steam as well. So in that aspect too, um, going with the Oculus Rift would be a better move than going with PlayStation VR. I got to be honest there too. Because... Uh, there's, you know, if you want to play multiplayer games, there's tons of multiplayer games uh, between the Oculus Store and between Steam. There's a ton of multiplayer games, and that's definitely something that the PlayStation VR is lacking. Um, they don't have a ton of multiplayer games. Uh, cold yogurt. I, I put my valve base stations uh, flat on surfaces and I will lose tracking when something's blocked. It is view. I don't doubt it. You said, damn, every time I say something good about the rift, I learn something new about the quest. Again, you know, um, you know, um, money's the situation with you leaf if you had the money to do it i would have said buy both the rift s and the quest but because money's an issue i feel like the quest would give you um the best the best bang for the buck because you can connect it to the um pc from which i understand you will have a picture that's actually a little bit better than that rift for 175 bucks this that you're looking at and you have the option of taking it with you so in that aspect i think the um quest would probably be the way to go and golfer just said it right there both the oculus are both are good so um either one of those whichever route you want to go if you want to pay the 175 dollars and get that rift that's a great route that's a great route to go but if you decide to get the quest then um, you'll, to me, you'll have the best of both worlds. <clears throat> you know, you'll be able to get the PC experience through the Oculus Le through the Oculus Link, and you'll be able to take it with you and play games wherever. You know, you'll be able to take it with you. So, uh, neither is a bad move. But um, uh, thanks for popping by, Jay Swoles. Let me answer this for Leaf real quick. He said, uh, "Golfer, you can play Quest games on Steam also." only through the oculus link so again you know when you connect the oculus um the oculus quest to your pc through the link cable that's how you are able to play steam games on your quest so yes in that sense yes you can play uh steam games on your quest it's not a situation where you can download steam games into the quest and take them with you on the go um no you, you're playing this through your pc th by way of the um link cable so <clears throat> another good thing about the quest yeah so uh yeah i'm getting a little bit scratchy here but um but hey you know anytime you guys want to chop it up whenever you don't see me uh doing a podcast don't hesitate to um follow me on twitter and every time you see a little article or something like that and you want to tag me in it you know talk a little bit vr you know shoot the breeze there you go so that's gonna do it for me um it's inching ever so close to midnight and i need to go get some vr therapy in before i go to bed so i want to thank everybody for tuning in that's gonna do it for me i'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up yes we're coming up on two hours thanks everybody for tuning in uh, we had about uh, i think uh, 19 people in here at one time uh thanks for popping in so and uh, that, yeah, and I'll end it right there with uh, Cold Yogurt saying, yeah, you'll go further on um, on quests if your budget's tight. Absolutely. That, and, um, 
and that's another thing to consider, Leaf. If you get the quest, you can also buy these games. You can get these games cross by too. So, uh, meaning that, like, uh, take a game like Racket Fury, for instance. Uh, you could buy it if you were to buy it through the Oculus Store. You can get it cross by, meaning that you could be able to play the PC version of the game through your quest. But when you pick up and leave and go somewhere and take the quest with you, you have the quest version of the game with you. And I think it's also cross-play because um, I think quest people can play with PC people also. So, um, that, so yes, in that aspect, um, yeah, I'll call it in the night. Good night. Another great stream. Hey, thanks, golfer. I appreciate it. So, yeah, in that aspect, um, Cold Yogurt is absolutely right. Um, the quest will take you further, especially if you already have a PC. So, all right, folks. Now I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here. I'm getting scratchy. I'm getting hungry. I'm ready to jump on this quest. That's going to do it for me. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. I really, really appreciate it. I'm not sure what day I'll be back on this week. Um, so worst case scenario, you know, if enough news pops up, then I'll be ready to do a uh, live from Wakanda like I normally do on Saturdays. And uh, that's going to do it for me. Um... I'm going to say deuces right now, deuces, because what's been happening lately is that um, normally when I say deuces and then I hit the end stream button, it's not catching my send off. So deuces, everybody. We'll catch you sometime this week. Thanks for watching. Really, 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 really appreciate it. Later, y'all.